Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, before I get to uh, Mr. Chopra, uh, which I appreciate being here today, I also want to say uh, thank you to Patrick Toomey. Um, I remember the first time we worked on a bill and we were in the uh, dining room over at the Capitol, and I said, this, you're not nearly as crazy as the scouting report indicates you are, and I think you said something like, you want to keep that perception. So <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate everything uh, that you've done, and, and even though it has ruined my career calling you a smart dude, I, I do want to say that uh, it has been it has been good to work with you. Um, and in honor of Shelby, I'll just let you know I'm have my roll tide coffee cup, so uh, so it's, it's all good. Um, look, uh, Rohit, you and I have uh, discussed the importance of, uh, of making sure that we're holding uh, big tech companies accountable for how they're using consumers' data, especially when they're providing services like those that local bank and other regulated financial institutions traditionally provide. So uh, what are you seeing at the CFPB around uh, big tech companies and, and where they may be trying to uh, skirt the law? Well, I think what we're seeing is that Big tech firms payment system, and they're collecting an extraordinary amount of very detailed and personal information. We also know that some of the other big financial players are getting into data assets that small banks would never really even get near. And I think we have to address that together. So how will the CFPB standards that uh, regulated financial institutions meet so that consumers are protected? Well, Senator Toomey raised the issue of non-bank registration. They're subject to supervision. And one of the big things they ask for is for the CFPB it is to make sure there's a level playing field. So we have focused much of our supervisory attention on these non-banks who are not subject to the same oversight. Senator Reid asked about the Military Lending Act. Um, friends um, and their families, uh, what kind of risks are you seeing as uh, from your chair? So generally, you know, I think veterans right now, you know, how long they've been out of service. We have very serious issues with economic instability among our veterans in our country. Um, many um, have a whole set of issues with housing um, and credit and debt. Financial issues are a major driver uh, of challenges. So of course the military typically don't apply to those out of service. In particular, we see medical debt being pretty severe. We work how the VA's own medical debt programs can be fair and not pe be overly punitive and to really help veterans get through things. So we have a lot that the challenge may be growing. Is there anything Congress needs to be doing? Well, I think as it relates to veterans and credit and debt, especially medical I hate to see when veterans are not able to get through a tenant screening. I hate to see when they can't pass an employment verification check because of coding issues in their background. So I and especially that we can tangibly focus on fixing of course, I also want to make sure that if there is changes in the mortgage markets and the and housing prices, veterans be subject to unlawful foreclosures. The VA and its mortgage program play a huge role in making sure that those veterans can get loan modifications, that they're not subject to churning. And so housing is going to be a big piece when it comes to the veterans mortgage market. Just very quickly, 
um, in contact with the VA on, on these issues on a regular basis? We do. Um, I would say the secretary himself is also very supportive of thinking about financial issues okay. that our veterans are facing with them and you on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Tester.